What's going on everybody? It is Sparks Comics here bringing you guys my top 10 indie comic picks for this new comic book day for August 11th. So we'll get into that in just a moment, but first go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, like the video, and let me know what you're looking forward to this upcoming new comic book day. Welcome back everybody, let's kick off these top 10 picks for this coming new comic book day with one from the Black Caravan imprint for Scout Comics. We've got Count Draco Knuckle Duster, issue number one. This one from Joseph Schmelke and Peter Goral writing it and Joseph Schmelke doing the art. This is the follow-up series. Um, in this world to uh, Phantom Star Killer, and then there's going to be another chapter um, following another character in this world. So all connected, but uh, this one picks up where the last one left off. And I hadn't read Phantom Star Killer. I've got the fourth printing on order uh, for coming up, but uh, this was aw awesome. I got it in the Scout Comics box, uh, so I got it early. Um, so I already can tell you guys a little bit about it, but. Uh, yeah, definitely recommend picking this one up. It's awesome. Um, I mean, there, there's definitely some similarities with Darth Vader in, in design, but more magic involved and is great. So that is why it is my number 10 pick this week for upcoming indie comics. Following that, we've got Bunny Mask issue number three being my ninth pick this week from Aftershock Comics. This one from Paul Tobin and Andrea Moody. Uh, I've been loving this. This is very creepy with the, the, the bunny mask girl. And what happens at the end of the issue is just wild. A end of issue two. Um, and so where this goes from there is going to be very interesting. There are some previews pages already available. So um, I haven't actually looked at those yet, but uh, it looks like it's showing um, not the exact place where it left off. So it'll be uh, interesting to see what happens next. Um, but yeah, this is why it's my number nine pick. I've really been enjoying this series. Following that, we have our number eight pick this week from Image Comics, Ordinary Gods issue number two by Kyle Higgins and Felipe Watanabe. Now this one is uh, had a very interesting start. It wasn't exactly what I expected it to be with issue number one. I'm giving this one another issue or two um, because I'm very intrigued by this whole idea with the gods and what they're going to do with them. Um, but I did go into issue one thinking it was going to be something else, so it wasn't, um, from that perspective, it wasn't what I was looking for for the comic, but I'm really enjoying the... Uh, you know, what could happen with the story with the uh, Earth being a prison for these gods and they're trying to break their way out of it. Super cool concept that Kyle Higgins has going here. So I really want to know what happens next in the story and uh, it looks like what we have coming up in this issue is going to be very interesting. So that's why it is my uh, number eight pick this week for top indie comics. Moving on from that, we've got the seven pick this week that is Mamo number two from Boom Studios actually the Boom Box imprint of Boom Studios which honestly for me I feel like Boom Box books just always knock it out of the park and are really enjoyable uh, this one written and illustrated by Sass Millage um, we've got uh, our hedge witch um, coming to uh, her grandmother who's dead and Things are, her grandmother's death is causing chaos across uh, the city. Um, and uh, yeah, this is very, uh, it was a very interesting first issue. I really enjoyed the art and I really enjoy what's going on with the witches and the cat and the, the fae um, creatures in the world. Um, so this one is really like a boom box just for me knocks it out of the park every time that I've been reading um, books from there. And so this one made it to my number seven pick this week uh, for new comic book day. 
Moving on from that, we got another one from Aftershock Comics. We've got Clans of Bellari issue number two from Rob and Peter Blackie with art by Daniel Main and Andy Clark on the cover here. Uh, yeah, the possibilities of what could happen in this world and the world building that we saw in issue number one really has me excited to continue reading this series. And um, I thought that the pace for issue number one was appropriate given how much of a world they have to establish here in this sci-fi universe. Um, with any sci-fi book, if you rush too far into it too quickly, there's going to be a lot of questions that get unanswered. And I think they did a great job starting to establish this. Um, a lot of Aftershock books start as just five issue series and then maybe go from there. So I'm hoping this one, even if it is planned for five issues, does get to be just an expansive world building kind of uh, comic that we get to see more and more of this world because I'm very intrigued by the different clans and the rules that they have set in these clans. Uh, a whole um, rebellion against the system is going to be very interesting and in how that plays out. Um, but yeah, this is uh, one of the, you know, the books I'm looking forward to this coming week, uh, and so it's my number six pick for new comics. Moving on from that, we got another one from Scout Comics, and this one I've also gotten to read and really enjoyed. Um, Mar Marquise Nasso writing and Jason Muir on the art. Um, this has just been such a great series, evolving from what it could have just been a unicorn hunting um, comic to uh, a wizard hunting comic, and of expansive world that's really been starting to be fleshed out a little bit more um, and the relationship between Elodie and the the unicorns has just been excellent to see develop and learning more about these wizards and their evil deeds has just been super cool and uh, I read this because of course this was in the Scout Comics box as well and it was fantastic and if you aren't reading by the horns you should be it's a great fantasy tale uh and yeah i'm really looking forward to uh i mean i guess i'm not really looking forward to it because i already got to read it but uh i w would have been really looking forward to reading this on new comic book day but now i'm, I'm glad i caught up on it read it and uh yeah recommending this as my number five pick this week for indie comics so moving on from that one, we've got another one from Boom Studios at the number four spot, and that is Eve number four. This one written by Victor Laval, uh, art by Joe Migyong, and uh, cover here by Ario Anandito. Uh, cover B also by John Boy Myers is phenomenal. And some really crazy things happened in this last issue with uh, who Eve met and what's going on with Wexler. Um, just crazy stuff going on. I love this series. I love what they're doing with it. It's definitely not for kids, despite the teddy bear. Uh, but it is phenomenal, and I think everyone should be checking this one out as well. Um, says why Eve number four is at my number four pick this week. Uh, coming in at number three from Black Mass Studios, I have White Issue number two. Again, this one, though, limited to 2,500 copies, so this is probably going to be just as hard to get as issue number one, although I know some people probably decided not to read the series because they weren't able to get a copy. The second print did come out of issue number one, so I expect there'll be another uh, second print here for white number two. Uh, Kwanzaa Osayefo writing this one, Jamal Igle on the art, and Kari Randolph doing the cover here. Uh, Issue one was great return to the world and seeing um, some big parallels between the book, obviously, and current things that have been going on in the world with President Man. Um, and so the the whole first son and the armor thing and um, him fighting back against the uh, super powered uh, black population is is very interesting setup here of what they got going on and i'm really looking forward to how the rest of this series plays out um how uh this arc will go but yeah i really loved issue one and so issue number two is my number three pick this week 
Moving into the number two spot, we have another Aftershock comics book. This one, a number one this week. Cam uh, Campisi, The Dragon Incident, issue, issue number one. This one from James Patrick Marco Locati and a cover by Fran Galan. Uh, Sonny Campisi is a small-time fixer for the mob-controlled neighborhood of Green Village. If you don't pay your gambling debt, he'll come and collect. If you get a little rough with one of the girls, he gets a little rough with you. But when a dragon flies into town and Sonny is the one who's tasked with getting rid of it, it's a problem like any he's facing. A chain of events begins that will affect everyone who lives in the neighborhood, especially Sonny. Uh, this just sounds really, uh, really like a fun book. It says uh, it's a genre, genre mashing comedy thriller that plays one part Get Shorty and one part Dragon Slayer and all parts absurdly wonderful. Each issue is 24 pages of story with a cardstock cover. It does have a $4.99 price tag, uh, but it's looking very, very good. Um, you can take a look at the interiors um, already on uh, the previews website. And I, I'm really looking forward to seeing this. I love the fantasy genre. I love um, what could be done here with dragons. So I can't wait to read this one. That's why it's my number two pick this week. Uh, and then coming in, my number one pick for the week, it's got to go to Cinnamon issue number one from Happy Tank Comics, uh, the imprint of Behemoth Comics. Victoria Douglas writing and illustrating this one, and it is just phenomenal. Uh, we had Victoria on the channel before this book hit cutoff in preview, so about two months ago. Uh, Victoria did such a great job with this. Cinnamon is just so much fun. It's very entertaining, especially if you have a cat. Uh, you will pick up on things that you're like, yep, mm, that, I see why it was done this way. This is my, my cat does that. Uh, going for the catnip on the counters and skyscraper, big kitchen city, uh, fighting the, you know, the biker gang of cat toys of, you know, uh, it's just so much fun. I really enjoyed this. Uh, it, it has to be my number one pick this week because of how much I enjoy this book. Um, I've gotten, of course, I, like I said, read issue number one before we interviewed Victoria, and um, while we were interviewing Victoria, we had the cover C turned into a poster and put on Behemoth Comics' website while we were doing the interview, which was crazy, uh, and so shout out to uh, Nathan and Ryan at Behemoth for doing that, because I have that poster up on my wall right now, uh, and I love it. Um, but yeah, Cinnamon, great book, highly recommend picking this one up if you haven't heard of it, um, call your shop, see if they're getting it, and uh, get yourself a copy, or get a copy from the Behemoth Comics website, um, straight straight from the source. So that is my number one pick this week, and it is a little bit of a lighter uh, pickup week for me this coming week, it looks like, so uh, getting that top ten together was uh, uh, a lot of fun to look at, you know, the ones that I'm really looking forward to this coming week. Got a couple others that I, I think are coming out this week um, that I'm looking forward to as well, but these were my top 10 picks. Um, so thank you guys for watching. Uh, be sure to check out all the links down below. We've got shirts, we've got a Twitch channel, we've got um, a website. Go check all those things out. Uh, if you aren't subscribed already, hit that button down below. Subscribe to the channel. There's a bell notification button so that you know when we're dropping new videos and uh, like the video and let me know what you guys are looking forward to this week for new comic book day. These of course are just the indie picks. Um, I know there's DC and Marvel coming out coming up this week, but a lot of people talk about all the picks, so I just wanna highlight the indie picks for you guys. So thanks everyone. As always, collect what you love, and I'll see you next time.